Hi, I'm Bai Feng Shi. Thank you for your interest in our new work on temporary action detection with multi level supervision. In action detection, normally the training data has both the class label and the location of the action. So the location is really hard to annotate, and this brings the question of how can we benefit our action localization model from wiki level data and unlabeled data? To incorporate wiki level data and unlabeled videos into our training, we propose two new tasks first. Semi-supervised action detection, which learns from labeled data and unlabeled videos, and also omnisupervised action detection, which learns from all three levels of supervision. So we first propose a basic pipeline for semi-supervised and omnisupervised action detection. So for fully labeled data and weekly labeled data, we apply the traditional supervised laws and weekly supervised laws. And for the unlabeled video, we borrow some basic unsupervised learning strategies, such as consistency learning. However, we find that the baseline model that simply adds unlabeled and weekly labeled data into training hardly helps the performance. So to find out the reason, we analyze the main errors in the baseline model, and we explore three kinds of errors here. The action incompleteness, the misclassification, and action context confusion. It turns out action incompleteness is very common in the semi supervised baseline, and the action context confusion becomes the main error in omni supervised baseline. We first deal with action incompleteness in SSAD baseline. So the goal is to detect more complete action clips. And we observe that actions are basically foreground motion. So then we come to this idea of learning action representation, which focus on the discriminant moving foreground object and to help detect complete temporal action clip. And specifically, we use the independence between the foreground motion and background motion to segment the foreground object. We can build a graphical model of the foreground and background motion. So is foreground and background motion really independent? Actually, no, because since we are dealing with video data, we should not only consider the motion in the physical world, we also need to consider the motion of the camera. But when we are recording the video, we normally move our camera to follow the foreground object. So the camera motion is only affected by the foreground and the background will move accordingly when the camera moves. So if we see one step further, we can find that the foreground motion at t plus one frame and the background motion at t frame are independent conditioned on ft. So we can tell the conditional independence from the graph because of the V-shaped structure here. And in practice, the minimization of the conditional mutual information can be done by a two predictor game. And essentially, we are minimizing the difference between the two prediction errors. And in this way, the attention module gives the foreground mask. And from experiments, we can see that the attention weight visualization coarsely detects the foreground object. And the foreground attention can bring some improvement to the semi supervised baseline and the action completeness error is also reduced. So now what about omni supervised model? So our goal here is to separate action and context frames. And our method is to learn only action information and discard the scene information. So how can we do this? Actually, we can notice that the non-action frames only contain scene information. So a simple way is to discard the scene information by minimizing the information from all the non-action frames. And this becomes an information bottleneck where we train the classification and meanwhile filter out the useless information in non-action frames. In the experiments, we can see that the proposed information bottleneck is helpful for the detection performance and reduces the error of the action context confusion. Lastly, we show the benefit of such unified framework under a fixed annotation budget. So by annotating a bunch of data with mixed levels of supervision, we can get improved results compared to only full supervision or only weak supervision. So this shows the advantage of multi-level supervision. That is the main content of our work. So if you are interested in more details, please check our paper. Thank you.